This is Contractor Sense with Ruth King. Welcome to Contractor Sense. Here you discover ideas, tactics, news, and information that matters to your contracting business and you. I'm your host, Ruth King. This episode is sponsored by Profitability Movement. Go to https forward slash forward slash profitability dash movement dot mn dot co to join this community of business owners focused on building profit, increasing wealth, and giving back. Thank you for joining us. Here's how we will help your business and you today. The weather has turned. For plumbers in Texas, you had the weather turn for you a few weeks ago when the ice storms hit. For HVAC and generator companies, weather has finally warmed up or gotten hot, and we're on the verge of hurricane season. What do we need to do to prepare? In this two-part series, I'll discuss some of the activities you can do to ensure that you have a profitable and wealth-building summer. First, I want to talk about inventory. And I know for some of you, you're rolling your eyes in the back of your head because you don't do inventory. You don't track inventory. And it's just, you know, you buy what you need, you use it, and it's done. Well, question is, are you buying what you need more than what you need, less than what you need? And if you're buying more than what you need, where is the extra going? If you're at a supply house and you need a condenser fan motor, Are you buying two? What's happening to the second? If you have a warehouse full of materials, how long have they been there? Are you using it? There's lots of things to do with inventory, and that's not the purpose of this podcast. It's the remember that we're heading towards summer, and inventory is going to be incredibly important to track so that you don't buy all this extra stuff, and at the end of the summer, you're left over with a lot of stuff. Now, that's one thing. On the other side, most of us are having supply issues or we're having price increases. Have you checked the price of copper lately? Good grief. It's going up and up and up and up. So one of the things you may want to do is figure out how many line sets you used last year and buy as many line, that many line sets so that you have them for the summer. Then if the price of copper doubles again, You don't have to worry about it. You've already paid for it, and you don't have to worry about increasing costs and changing your pricing every two weeks as prices increase. One of the contractors I know, who shall remain nameless, invested in a half million dollars in inventory so that he would have enough for the summer. He calculated how much equipment he sold last year figured he'd sell probably around the same this year, and that's what he bought. It was sitting in his warehouse. It's being used. He doesn't have to worry about calling one of his distributors or a supplier and say, I need a three-ton X, and they say, I'm sorry, we don't have a three-ton X. So he doesn't have to worry about the shortages. He knows that he has the equipment that he probably will need through the summer. Now, is that a bet? Of course it is, because who knows? None of us have a crystal ball that um, will sell exactly what we sold last summer. He's making an educated decision based on what he sold over the past couple of years, period. And yes, 2020 was definitely a COVID summer. So it might be a little bit different in 2021 than it was in 2020. However, he had to make an educated guess. He had the cash, and we'll talk about cash next time, um, to be able to do something like that. He potentially will be in a situation where he has equipment and his competition doesn't. He has equipment at a price that his competition doesn't. So if his competition has to factor in the latest price increases, he doesn't. So his pricing can be less or he can earn more simply because he was smart enough to worry about inventory for this summer. So that's really a reason to save cash so that you have the wherewithal to write a half a million dollar check to be able to cover all the inventory that you're going to need for the summer and all the equipment that you're going to need for the summer. Is he getting the half a million dollars back? Of course he is. Times whatever, because that's his cost. That's not his selling price to the customer. However, he had the cash in the bank to be able to do it. So if you don't want any other reason to save cash, this might be a reason to do it so that you can, number one, 
have what you need when you sell a system or a generator or something to a customer, and you can supply it, install it, and get paid back. That's a key for this particular time of year and what we're doing with COVID. So I'm seeing a lot of things with respect to shortages, both from generators and um, HVAC equipment, and it's spotty around the country. So just make sure that you look and you see how much you've actually installed last year and see whether you can get the same amount of equipment this year. And if nothing else, buy the line sets if you need the line sets. Copper pricing is way too volatile right now. And I don't want you to have to raise your prices, number one, or number two, not have the line sets that you need so that you can take care of a customer and make the customer comfortable in his or her home again. Okay, so that's number one. Make sure that you have the inventory you need on hand. It is important to do that, and obviously you want to track it as much as you possibly can. However, we've had that discussion in the past, and it's not the discussion of this podcast. When we get back, we're going to talk about some of the marketing things uh, that you can be doing to get ready for summer. And no, I'm not crazy. Marketing is still important when the summer hits, or if it's not quite summertime where you are, there are some things that you can do to make it um, a little busier at this time of year and make sure that you are prepared for summer. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. Don't let this happen to you. Here's a transcript of an email sent to Ruth King. Dear Ruth, I wish I had this book two years ago. I discovered my bookkeeper had embezzled over $200,000 from the company. I used to be debt free. Now I have a mortgage and payments on other debt I incurred to relieve the cash flow crunch caused by the embezzlement. Don't let this sad situation be your story too. An epidemic of workplace thievery and embezzlement harms today's business world, our economy, and ultimately your income and net worth. Discover the top 50 ways employees and vendors steal from you in Ruth King's new book, The Ugly Truth About Cash. Ruth also gives you the procedures to implement to help prevent embezzlement and keep the honest people honest. Find the ugly truth about cash on Amazon or go to www.thecouragetobeprofitable.com to order an autographed copy of Root's book. Get the information you need to protect your hard-earned cash and assets. That's thecouragetobeprofitable.com. We're back. Thanks for listening to Contractor Sense. Before the break, I gave you inventory things you might want to think about doing now to make sure you have the parts and pieces and equipment you need this summer when your customer says, I want X, and you just need to have X. I want to talk to you now about marketing. And some of you are going to think I'm absolutely insane. Why market in the summer when it's busy already? Well, unless you're marketing to a maintenance agreement client, which you don't really have to do in the summertime, you're in a situation where people aren't going to pay attention to our messages no matter how loudly we shout them or how obnoxious, unfortunately, some of us get, that um, they don't need it. Why are they going to pay attention to it? So if it's you know 50 degrees outside or 60 degrees outside, it's gorgeous out. They don't need heating and they don't need cooling. And you are sending them a postcard or putting an ad on the radio or you know have a billboard or newspaper or something like that. People are not going to pay attention. They will pay attention when it's time for them to have a need for it, i.e. it's getting warm or it's getting cold. Now, as the weather heats up, that very first hot day has a tendency to people to get people start thinking about their air conditioning system. You know, when it first turned you know, in Texas, when it, the ice storm first hit, people were like, OK, now what do I do? And they started calling their plumbers and they started calling their electricians and they started calling their HVAC guys and their generator guys. Most of them, one of my clients there got 5,000 phone calls and the only people they could take care of were their maintenance agreement clients. So that's why from a maintenance perspective, maintenance clients are very important for the client and for you. But anyway, back to marketing. What do you do? All right. The first thing that I would do, and you don't have to go spend a killer amount of money to do this, 
is I'd look at my customer list. And I'd look at my customer list and I would look at all of the people in the past two years, given that 2020 was an interesting year, let's leave it that way with COVID, and find out how many of them did not renew their maintenance agreements. We did this with one of my clients and it was 453 customers in the past two years who had maintenance agreements that did not renew them. That is a lot of customers who have not renewed their maintenance agreements. So we actually have people picking up the telephone, yes, picking up the telephone and calling each of them. So we're trying to, number one, get back in their home and explain that it's time to get their system maintained for spring or clean for spring or however you want to say it. And by the way, your maintenance agreement has expired. The service technician will renew it when he goes out there. And so we're renewing them by phone. We're not trying to send them a postcard or direct, you know, a letter or anything else like that. We're literally picking up the phone and talking to 450 former customers. They deserve it. They owned a maintenance agreement at some point in time. It's a phone call that should be made to find out if we can take care of their system again. And most of them are coming back so far. Jury's still out on the total amount that actually come back, but results in the beginning have been pretty good. All right, so that's the first thing I would do. I would go for the past two years for 2019 and 2020 and first part of 2021 is find out how many maintenance agreement customers did not renew their maintenance agreement. It makes no sense to send 22 postcards, 57 letters and things along those lines, either call or text. It's the way that you're going to get them back and assume that they want the maintenance done on their system and say, by the way, the technician will renew your maintenance agreement when he's out there after you've set up the call. That's the way I would do it. All right. So that's number one. Doesn't cost a whole lot except for time. Phone calls. All right. Number two is look at the rest of your customer list. And within the past three years, how many inactive customers do you have? And I define an inactive customer as somebody who has written you a check, given you a credit card or cash payment of some way, shape, or form in the past three years, but not in the past year. So you're going to look at customers who used you, your company, in 2018, 2019, and 2000. And 17, but did not use you in 2021. So 17, 18, 19, not 20, not 20 or 21. Those, depending upon how many there are, you may want to start with a, a cute postcard that, you know, did we screw up or, you know, we want you back or something along those lines and give them a reason to come back. Give them a reason for a um, cooling maintenance Give them a reason to use your company again. Give them a $25 off coupon for any repair. And quite frankly, you're going to have to send one to your maintenance agreement clients too. If I was a maintenance agreement client and I saw somebody that was getting something that I wasn't getting, I would not be a happy camper. I would want to make sure that I got whatever somebody else got. You know, if you think about it, how many times do you see on television the trying to get people to switch their cell phones? And it's always the great deal for new customers. Well, you know, what happens if I've been a customer for 10 years? Why can't I get the same deal? Now, AT&T recently has done that. They've given people um, the same deal, whether they switch or whether they've been a customer. So I give AT&T kudos for actually taking care of the customers who are existing customers as well as who they want to switch. So... Send your maintenance agreement clients a postcard or an email with a little coupon in it that basically says, thank you for being a maintenance agreement client. Here's $25 off any service repair this summer. And you do the same thing for those who you say, we want you back. Now, the text is slightly different. The coupon might be the same. It might be also you want to do a coupon for that. You might want to do a certain dollar amount off a new system. IAQ is also really hot and heavy right now in terms of interest. Um, those are some of the things that I would do to get the customers back. And then you want to track it to make sure that they came back. 
how good were your efforts? How good was the um, incentive to get them back? Did you talk to any of them? We had you know, a finite number, you know, 453. But if there's 2,000 people who are inactive customers that you want to reactivate, 2,000 phone calls is a lot. It's a lot. I don't know whether it's more cost effective, probably, to send the postcard initially and then follow up after the postcard. But anyway, this is the time of year to make sure that everybody gets their maintenance done. So as you're getting ready for summer, reactivate those customers who have canceled or not renewed their maintenance agreements and talk to those customers who are inactive and you haven't done work for them in the past year, but you've done work with them in the previous three years. So those are the first two things to do to get ready for summer. The first is inventory and making sure that you understand, not understand, but actually find out what you sold last summer and make sure that you can get that at least again. And if you got the cash, which will be our conversation for next contractor sense, um, you don't have to worry about finding the cash to pay for it up front. And then we talked about making sure that you reactivate your inactive customers and you reactivate those customers who have not renewed their maintenance agreements. So thank you for joining us. Choose one thing that you discovered and implement it in your business. These ideas, tactics, and strategies help you make more money, have more free time, and give back. If you like today's program, spread the word. Please review this podcast on any device you're listening to it on. Help a fellow contractor make more money, too. For comments or questions, call me at 770-729-0258 or email ruthking at hvacchannel.tv. Thanks for listening. Have a great and profitable day.